B here and welcome back to Environmental Science. In our last lesson, we spent time discussing the biotic and abiotic factors in an ecosystem. However, we never clearly defined what an ecosystem was. Well, that is today's topic, ecosystems. Looking at this example of an ecosystem from our last lesson, I want you to pause the video and record your own definition of an ecosystem. From our previous lesson, you may define an ecosystem as the biotic and abiotic factors in an environment, and that is really close to the correct definition. An ecosystem is a self-sustaining unit in which biotic and abiotic components interact with each other. In today's lesson, we will dive further into ecosystems, discussing examples, their components, and their main functions in the biosphere. Before we get started, let's look at our goals for this lesson. By the end, you'll be able to define ecosystems, discuss the major functions of an ecosystem, identify the main categories of ecosystems on Earth. Another name for an ecosystem is a biogeocoenosis. Wow, that's some name! It may sound weird, but when you break it down, it actually makes a lot of sense. Looking at the word biogeocoenosis, do you recognize any prefixes we have already discussed in this class? You may see bio, which we defined as life. Do you also see geo, which like the geosphere means land? There is one more prefix in that word, one that is not necessarily a scientific prefix, but more commonly used. Do you see it? Co. Co means together, like cooperate means to work together and coexist means to be together in a space. What about the suffix osis? Do you know what that means? This one is not as common, so you might not be familiar with it. Osis means state or condition. Okay, so when we put this all together, we have biogeocoenosis, life, land, together, condition. Thinking about our definition of an ecosystem, a self-sustaining unit of living and non-living components that interact with each other, does life, land, together, condition make sense? It does. We can use the terms ecosystem and biogeocoenosis interchangeably. However, since biogeocoenosis is a mouthful, in this course we will probably stick with ecosystem. There are two main categories of ecosystems, terrestrial or land-based ecosystems and aquatic ecosystems. Within each of these categories are several subcategories as well. Terrestrial ecosystems are usually broken into three main subcategories, the forest, grasslands, and desert ecosystems. The forest ecosystems are recognizable by the large number of trees present, while the grasslands are known for their small shrubs and grassy areas. When looking to identify a desert, it would be recognized by its limited vegetation, extremely high temperatures, and low rainfall. How about the aquatic ecosystems? Well, they are broken into two main groups. Can you think what they might be? Freshwater and saltwater. Freshwater ecosystems include ponds, lakes, and streams, while the saltwater ecosystems include the wetlands, estuaries, and marine areas. As we learned in our last lesson, all components in an ecosystem can be divided into two groups, biotic and abiotic components. Biotic or living components include the animals, plants, and bacteria that live in the ecosystem, while abiotic or non-living components include the air, water, sun, temperature, and soil. Ecosystems are an important level within the biosphere. 
They are the first level that includes the interaction between the living and non-living components. These interactions lead an ecosystem to have four major functions. Productivity, decomposition, energy flow, and nutrient cycling. Productivity is the amount of biomass produced by photosynthesizing organisms in an ecosystem. This includes plants, trees, algae, and cyanobacteria. The function of decomposition is the process of breaking down dead organic material by organisms such as bacteria, earthworms, and fungi. This process helps keep soil fertile and supports the nutrient cycles by breaking down the organic material into smaller pieces so that other organisms can use those building blocks again. The water cycle, the carbon cycle, the nitrogen cycle are all examples of nutrient cycling. This important function of ecosystems helps move nutrients through the biosphere so that the abiotic factors can support the biotic factors. Finally, we have energy flow. This is the process of the movement of energy through the food webs from the producers to the consumers as organisms are eaten by other organisms. As we went through the lesson today, we defined the term ecosystem and discussed its major functions. In our next lesson, we will go into more depth on how energy flows through ecosystems as we start to wrap up our ecology unit. Until next time, remember, you're a force of nature, so keep sparking the changes that you want to see. I'll see you next time. Hey, hey.